So, in this somewhat skeptical atmosphere, the USS Langley CD-1 emerged. She was an experiment at first, a flight deck built on an obsolete Collier's hull, an airport sent out to sea. Lieutenant Commander Chevalier made the first landing on the Langley deck in 1922. For the next few years, Navy pilots and the Langley crew worked hard to master the complex techniques for handling both the carrier and her planes. gunfire spotting, and aerial gunnery. The early 1920s also saw the development of catapults, a resting gear, a faster elevator to clear the flight deck, safe fuel handling techniques, a landing light system, and all the other hardware needed to launch and land to refuel and maintain aircraft at sea. All our early work was complicated by the progress made in aircraft design from 1925 to 1930. Engines were increasingly bigger and more powerful. Planes got heavier and yet flew higher, farther, faster almost every day. mechanical and flight techniques of operating the carrier and its planes. We were also developing carrier doctrine, the theory of how the naval air arm should operate, including some new ideas of the strategy, the maneuvers that carrier-supported fleet might use in war. So what we'd learned on the Langley was applied to two new carriers that joined the fleet in 1928. Lexington and Saratoga were improvements over the old Langley. But as carriers, both were compromises. The best we could do with converted cruiser hulls, whose flight decks had to take increasingly faster and heavier planes. But both the Lexington and Saratoga served us well. It was on their flight deck. Joe Reeves was delighted. So were we. We knew this was really the first unveiling of carrier aviation. Others knew it too. Others, like the F-4B, became workhorses for the fleet. development of aircraft had a profound influence on carriers. Her arresting gear was unable to handle the faster and heavier planes still coming along. <laughs> 